Thanks for joining us for another exciting episode of Film Reels, where we're going to be interviewing local filmmaker Carolyn Baker of Screaming Like Banshees Productions. So be careful because someone's looking be behind you, but don't look turn now because we have an awesome episode coming your way. Okay, there you go. Both well, you guys go. I can't do one more like that. Now I move. Do it again. Excellent. Yeah, give me a spin with the gun. I can't spin it. My fingers. That's all the better. Give me a terrible oh. attempt at a spin that doesn't work. Love it. You ready? Okay, action. Really still, relax, take a deep breath like you're super still with your eyes closed, and then suddenly eyes snap open, and then kind of scowl, like growl, and then punch. Excellent. Oops, I hit the camera. I'm doing a couple of these from this angle. Go. So that was a random selection of scenes that involved Carolyn Baker here, who is our guest this week in Film Reels. How's it going, Carolyn? Pretty good. How are awesome. you doing? <laughs> I'm doing awesome. Good. Um, so let's just kick this interview off. All ha! right. Um, <laughs> where were you born? Uh, Chicago, Illinois, Chicagoland area. I yeah. lived most of my life in the Chicagoland area. How was that the growing region. up? It was great. I yeah? love the region. Yeah. It's, uh, you just out running in the streets, just kicking over trash cans? <laughs> uh, some of the time. Some of the time we're in a rural sort of setting, riding ponies and having uh, flying kites. Aww. So we had the whole kind of American mix of uh, experiences, I think. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, where'd you go to high school? Uh, I went to a few different high schools. I graduated from uh, Munster, Indiana. Munster High School in Munster, okay. Indiana. And were you involved in any kind of like extracurricular activities? Uh, I was not. I no? was involved in only a completely outside of school activities, like the punk scene and skateboarding nice. and avoiding it's my classmates. Something. It's still something. Right, yeah, that was this is not, well, not, it's not, not school sponsored yeah, extracurricular yeah. <laughs> activities. Right, it was all kind of uh, very extra extracurricular. That's pretty awesome, though. It was fun for me. Did any of that kind of like... Uh, uh, make you want to go because you went to film school afterwards. So, where uh, did any of that influence you? Just like, or did you just say, I like films? You know, it kind of just occurred to me right as I was getting ready to start college that film was even a thing that people could do. Yeah. Um, I went and I took a psychological test that was like an intelligence test plus a psychological test, and they tried to pair you with people who with your similar features, were successful and happy in their field. Interesting. And the number one pick was film director. And it was the first time it ever occurred to me that you could go to school to be a film director. And I was like, wow, that's a thing? Yeah. Right, so Columbia College, right Columbia near College. my hometown, was a good school for that. So, yeah. That's what you did? That's what I did. And then after that, you went to, was it Spain? France. I went to France. Uh, was having a good time in film school but wanting more like real world experience so I was doing some outside of school things shooting concert footage and that kind of stuff nice and I got a job with a friend uh, from Chicago who had moved to New York to go to the NYU um, school of she was studying history art history okay. and she wanted to go to Europe a as her postgraduate work and follow an ancient pilgrimage route through Germany France and into Spain okay. and she wanted me to go along and document her findings, and so I agreed to do that. It sounded like a really great project. Yeah. It turned out to be a kind of a grueling nightmare. <laughs> and after being, you know, kind of the carrying bags and not being able to speak French and having this really grueling schedule of like every night just like copying my footage and recharging my batteries and then having to go get wine for her and just putting up with lots of being, you know, the sub working class nonsense, <laughs> I said, I need a break or I'm going to lose my mind. And she was like, okay, we'll take a little break and I'll watch the stuff and you just go to the beach. Mm -hmm. And I went to the beach and she immediately got all of our stuff stolen. Ugh. So all of her stuff was insured. All of my <laughs> stuff, it turned out, was not, Ugh. contrary to my previous understanding. So I was so angry, I cashed in my plane ticket, which was the only thing I had to my name at that point. I'd sold everything I had. I didn't have an apartment back home. I didn't have a job. I yeah. put all my money into my equipment. Cashed in my ticket, got the a ferry to Ireland, and just lived illegally in Ireland. 
And then while you were there, you were working and you were going to a film school there as well. I was. I figured that since I was in Ireland illegally, I had no <laughs> right to be there under any circumstances. And that to even get, you can either get a work permit or a, at the time, you could get either a work permit or a permit to go to school, but not both. And that I'd have to go back to America to get either. So I said, meh. I might as well, I'm breaking the law, I might as well break a few tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a, a like a work study job at school. I was working in a crummy little cafe and also in the cage, in the film cage at um, Valley Ferment Technical School, which was a really fun experience. And so I got, they warned me that they were going to deport me if I could get my paperwork in order, knowing that I wouldn't be able to, which was just their polite way of saying, get a ticket and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we'll get a more expensive ticket and send you <laughs> home and you'll owe the State Department yeah, yeah. like your kid. I was like, I don't want that. So, yes, I fled the country. You fled the country. And then you came back to New York and yep. then back to Chicago. Yep. And then you made the trek to Madison, Wisconsin. Yes, definitely. And this was 2009-ish? Uh, 2009-ish, sounds right. Yeah. Okay. And then while you were here, you met... Rob Michaels. Rob Michaels, exactly. And uh, and he does, and he owns a, a Screaming Like Banshees. Yep, he had started making, uh, I think he was on his second short film at that time. He had previously made Demon's Loot with some friends, and the other friends kind of lost interest, so he was working with uh, Shane White, is his uh, longtime best friend and our um, very, very awesome and talented special effects guy. <laughs> So they were working on a film, Flesh Eating Fog. <laughs> he showed me Demon's Loot. I absolutely loved it, and then immediately jumped in and started working on Flesh Eating Fog, too. Sweet. Wrote some scenes, and we've been chugging along, Chugging-on. making little <laughs> ground movies ever since then. So tell us a little bit about your about all the crew involved with uh, Screaming Like Banshees. We have a very, very small but very fantastic crew. We have Shane White as our main guy. He does the effects. He writes scenes that involve effects. And he is a fantastic actor. He's like a shockingly talented, awesome actor. Rob also is a good actor and will is very kind of tolerant and will do anything that I ask him to do. He's done some pretty amusing and outrageous scenes yeah. in our films. Uh, <laughs> I'm a terrible actress, so I stay behind the scenes. Uh, and up until now, it's mostly been local friends of his, because I don't know a whole lot of local people Yeah, yeah. in the talent role, although we're lately reaching out more towards uh, actual screen and stage talent. OK, OK. So you've been you've been you've submitted to and have gotten in some various film festivals. Yes, so definitely. So tell us about some of those that you've oh, been Oh, those into. have been such really great experiences. <laughs> the underground horror scene is really just supportive and fun, and, and yeah. so many people with like a can-do attitude that just love film and are sort of in the same position as we are to various degrees where the cost of equipment has come down to the point when pretty much anybody can make a film. Mm -hmm. So although there still are a lot of people just looking to kind of turn a quick buck and make a kind of soulless horror movie. There also are some people working on just like a shoestring budget with their friends and people who are just like dedicated and into it. And yeah. It's just been a blast. So we've screened at um, the Oshkosh Horror Film Festival. It's just fantastic. And that's right? where I met you. Yes, definitely. I, 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 always, I, always, I tell people it's funny because it took me going all the way up to Oshkosh to meet someone from Madison. Right, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if we would have like, met otherwise. Cause yeah. it's, it's, it, it, we it, might have waited until when we met again at the Madison Horror Film Festival. It might have been. Yeah, but, right. I, but either it or. It was helpful, though, it's that I already, you know. Yeah, we already knew of, each other by that point. And was, that you can already know the whole scene. Yeah. Just come to a local screening and you'll, you can meet like the entire Wisconsin <laughs> yeah. filmmaking scene. And yeah. They're just all like very supportive and <laughs> kind of come out for each other's stuff. And there's a strong like online presence. And yeah. And, and were those, uh, so were there any other film festivals that you've been a part of? Um, yeah, we were in the Wisconsin, or the, yeah, the Wisconsin Horror Film Festival that played here in Madison. Uh -huh. And we've also been in some screenings at different places in the country that we haven't gone to see the films. Okay. And in a big horror marathon at one of my favorite theaters, the Portage Theater, is this gigantic, old, gorgeous, but now kind of rotting theater on the northwest side of Chicago that local film lovers have saved by starting various niche film clubs hmm. and having like silent movies, horror movies. Nice. So it's another really great place, not so far to visit and see really good local underground and just film lovers films, like huh. old old horror movies, newer horror movies. That sounds awesome. It is, it's really a, a good theater. It was the only, because it was a theater that I went to as a kid and so often through my life, it's the only screening where I was like, I got like cold <laughs> feet and I was all nervous and it was weird because it was like the most gigantic screen and they were screening like, American Werewolf in London and Demons and these other movies that I have such huge respect for. So being on the screen with those movies was sort of, <laughs> sort of nerve wracking, but it was fun. So we're, so let's go through the list of of, of screener like Banshees uh, f 
films that you sure. guys have done. Um, so there was it there? Rob the Demon. did Demon's Loot, mm -hmm. and that was before I met him. And he was working on Flesh Eating Fog when I met him, and we both worked on that together. We made, uh, Rob Shane and I did a 24, no, 48 hour film challenge for a festival that didn't actually get enough submissions to happen. But that was fun. Fractured Nightmare, we still have the film. It's not very good, but it was a fun was, experience. You did it in 48 hours. We did, and it was like kind of silly and bizarre, and it was a fun experience. It's yeah. got some fun little clips. Is that available anywhere? Or any of your or any um, of the films? Actually, really? all of my films are pretty much available online. Okay. We're, you know, not at the point where we're looking for distribution or anything like that, so we're happy to just get our films out there, let people see them, hopefully attract interested people to collaborate with us. In the future, so yeah, just ScreamingLikeBanshees.com. Okay. You can find us on Facebook, and I think pretty much everything we've done, you can watch for free on the internet. Sweet. Um, okay, so let's continue on the list. Okay. Uh, Flesh Eating Fog. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, Demon's Loot, Flesh Eating Fog, Fractured Nightmares. We made a thing called Rotten Friend. <laughs> yeah, I love Which that is one. more of a, yeah, it's more of a Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. little different tone. It's adorable. I like that I'm one. I <laughs> like it so much. I, I'm in that one, too, but you don't, I'm not yeah, going to yeah, give yeah. it away. No, with don't. The part that I play, because it's kind of a, you won't be able to recognize yeah. me, I hope. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> after Rotten Friend, we did The Christmas Mommy, which was our most ambitious production to date, and we really should have just gone ahead and made it into a feature. When I see how much work we put into it to, pair, to have the tiny little 14 minutes, we really should have just gone just ahead gone and made right, a feature. All out on totally. it. <laughs> and yeah, and that's the that's... one that I saw at Oshkosh, and mm. it also played at Madison Horror. It did, yes. Um, so, and then, is there one more? I want to say there's one more. I just can't remember what it uh, is. <laughs> Rob made a little weird one called Dead Drunk that is really, yeah. really, it's so low quality, but it's about like a drunken, horrible hangover I, actually, nightmare thing where the low quality really works. And it's it, it's only available as like a so very bad transfer, but it's one of our most requested ones online that people I, like in Russia want to buy it. I like, really like that one. It's, yeah. People it's, like it's, it. such, it's such a simple concept. Mm -hmm. Like, you can describe it to someone, and then it's it's all about the punchline. It's right, the very last line right. the movie makes it great. And so just the go watch it. the crudeness and sleaziness of it works with the creepiness to me, where it's, some of our other things are funnier. Dead drunk is really kind of genuinely icky. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. Or yeah, not, way. depending on your taste. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> So you're working on two shorts and a feature. Yes. As a, your upcoming stuff. So and, and so tell us a little about uh, the, the shorts. Um, I have a short called Siren that I have hopefully cast. I'm looking for a good location that we hope to shoot in the spring that is more of a slick, pretty, kind of neat little package of a short where a beautiful girl go undergoes a horrible transformation. It's like a monster movie. Okay. And then Rob has also written a more gruesome and disturbing sort of psycho exploitation type of film about a deranged character <laughs> who has some unfortunate experiences. Oh, you know. And that we're hoping to shoot also in the spring for um, a local anthology, which I'm super enthused about because we're huge fans of the anthology style yeah, horror. Yeah. It's so nice to see like a mixed bag of different stuff. If you don't like one, you might like the next one, and you never know where it's going to go. I just love <laughs> anthologies, so really excited about that. And that one's, uh, what was, what's that one called? It's called Hole, Hole in the, the Wall, Wall. and uh, Derek Carey contacted me about it, and I know that uh, Corey Udler is like probably the hugest local name, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got a piece that he has already mostly filmed, and... Yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes, but it's, it's pretty exciting to be yeah. asked. Can you talk at all about the feature, or is that still in the works? Yeah, well, I would love to be able to start shooting a feature like as soon as possible, but we're looking at maybe not this summer, but next Slowly summer, right? <laughs> Slowly figuring out like crude level of production design where we're trying to figure out we don't just write a script and then figure out where we're going to film it. We look around and say, what can we yeah, do? Yeah. Where are we allowed to be <laughs> that we can film for free? A lot and of who parks, can right? We... Yes, exactly. We shoot in a lot of parks. <laughs> because in, in Wisconsin, you can shoot outside for free. You don't need a permit, so we shoot outside a lot. I love that fact. <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, we write around that. We write around like, what's available. So then the characters go to a park. <laughs> Another park. Our park's terrifying. Any terrible thing can happen in a park. Yeah, we based on that, we, have a, we love the bike paths, and we have so many great bike paths around here so we also have like a haunted bike path thing that if I can get a little more like crew it's so hard at our level to do the like production planning because we don't have money to pay anybody so we have to work around everybody's schedules and it's you know it can be logistically very very difficult but yeah we have the ideas we're getting better equipment hopefully the ball will start rolling a little yeah. faster 
So that's, that leads me to another question. Like, how, how exactly do you go about funding your movies? Is it entirely out of pocket? Oh, it's entirely out of pocket. Yeah. So, and we're not rich people. I'm a lunch lady and Rob's a delivery driver. You know, we don't have like tons of cash. People yeah. are always saying, oh, do you have like a rich uncle you could ask? No, 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 no none, of, none of that. We did a Kickstarter campaign and I think made $25. <laughs> was it right? So yeah, we pretty much try to do what we can for free. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get in a lot more like recognition and become become part of a larger community. Right. When people with see this. what a fun thing it is to do, definitely, it's such a blast. Yeah, come, yeah. Come and join us. That's yeah. the, the That's what we have to pay in is the uh, the opportunity to make terrifying art. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know that that's kind of the thing I love about this is kind of like the, the low. Uh, um, I wouldn't say quality. I'm a low budget. The low, sure. but you still tell it's a story. It's crude, right? Yeah. It's and that's and I think uh, like I, I know way too many people, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I've told the story a million times to my friends. I know too many people that are just like, I have an idea, but I need this much money to do it, and right. I need this quality of equipment before sure. I can even begin to think about it. And I admire people who are just like, I'm going to get my friends together, and it may not look like something that Ethan Hawke would would star in. But whatever. Right. <laughs> and and I, so. you know, I do love some higher budget movies with great effects and stuff, but I also I have to look at what's achievable to me and kind of focus on the yeah. grimy, grungy aesthetic that can also be scary. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all, all of the feature productions at uh, Screaming Like Banshees. So uh, what's the website that they, people can go and watch yeah, this stuff Yeah, just uh, ScreamingLikeBanshees.com, and you can also look for us on Facebook. Awesome. Well, go out there and do that. And this has been another exciting yeah. episode of Film Reels. <laughs> this is Carolyn Baker, and I'm Justin Schober, so rock out. I just want to see a lot of you. I knew it was funny. I totally was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>